Hey guys, uh, before we start the podcast, uh, real quick, we wanted to talk about and address everything that's been going on in the world. Um, uh, obviously, uh, the death of George Floyd has been a major controversy. Obviously, that's a huge injustice that's been happening. And here at the Smack Rock Podcast, specifically, me and our Ann and Jay Thunder and everyone else, I thank you for your guys' support. Um, but we felt like being the, the 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 main minorities of the podcast, we felt like we needed to address and say something and talk about Black lives because they do matter. And right now, they don't. Uh, they should matter. And I'm tired of seeing all these All Life Matter like posts and tweets saying that All Life Matters. We're not saying. I want to go ahead and make this very obvious. We shouldn't have to say this, but we're going to say it for those that do want to learn and, and be aware and understand and improve themselves. All lives matter. Like, like all lives can't matter until black lives matter do. We're not saying black lives matter more than other lives. We're just saying that right now they're not, they don't matter as much as white lives are, you know, as much as they matter to other people. And that's, that's why we're, Yes, of course, all lives should matter, but right now they don't. Uh, Aaron, like, you want to say something real quick? Yeah, my thing is, like, this all lives matter stuff, like, I'm looking at white people, Mexican people, anybody anybody that's using that, that is a cop-out because you don't want to stand up and face the facts of what's really going on. We know all lives matter. We're all human beings. We're all in this together. We're all Americans. But just by saying black lives matter, that's saying that we don't think we matter as much as other people's lives do. So if that's the case, how can you say all lives matter? All we want is for our voices to be heard, for us to be taken serious, and for us to be able to walk and do the things and be pulled over and whatever else we want to do that you have the privilege to do without losing your life. We're not saying that it's all police are bad and all the stuff that everybody wants to make this about. We're not saying that. We're saying that when a white person calls the police and says that there's a black person trying to kill me or a black person endanger me, 19 cruisers come up. If the situation was reversed, do you think that would be to happen? Or if you're pulled over for a traffic stop, do you think that a white person has a chance of getting shot in his car or get his pulled out the car, have a neck, a knee in his neck and killing him? No, that doesn't happen. You can say, well, all this, all lives matters. And if they was white, this wouldn't be the case and all that. And you're right. It wouldn't be because, you are the mind, you are the majority race. So things happen to you that shouldn't happen just like they do anybody, but it's happened at an alarming rate for people of color and not saying anything and not addressing it is almost as bad as condoning. Exactly. Uh you can't you can't be silent in these kind of situations. Yes, for the most part, we're here to basically try to entertain, but if we don't use our platform to go ahead and like we're not even a big podcast, but we have somewhat of a reach. And if we can make any kind of difference and like bring that message message forward, it's our responsibility to do so. Like I have so many black friends, like uh RN, you're like one of my favorite people to talk to. I'm so glad and grateful for you. You've Help me so much. And I just love hanging around with you. And I would hate for you to be the one in that situation. I would freaking hate it. I, I have so many friends, like I said, and I have so, so many people I look up to that are African-American. So many black of uh, so much of black culture is something that I love and appreciate. And I've seen nothing but love from all like my black, black friends, uh, celebrities, like the black community loves us Latinos and us Mexicans, I see nothing but love. And it pains me to see a lot of Latinos be this whole, like, it just be so ignorant and not realize that they're this whole, oh, well, what about us stuff? Like, oh, well, what about like all the kids that are like innocent kids that are being detained by ICE? Here's the thing. A lot of black people were in the front line supporting us, supporting that movement because they knew that a lot of us, because of legal status, a lot of Latinos couldn't do that. They were fearful of their 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 own safety. And because of that, they stood up for us. Man, just recently a couple like we just got a freaking like like Mexican music video with Snoop Dogg and Banda MS. Like Snoop Dogg has always been for the Mexican culture, man, I, I see more racism from our people towards blacks than I see from the black community towards us Mexicans. They love tacos. They they love their corn people. They they love us. It's time. And let's, to, they, and let's keep it real too. Like we're all not white, and sometimes not. that's and sometimes we just need to figure that. Like realize that. Like it ain't one of us or one of you or one of us. It's all of us that are minorities and. 
the undervalued, the under listened to. Like we're all in this together, yeah. flat out. Like it, that's just it. And this isn't a race war. This is no. a war against racism. There's a Facts. difference. You, if this offends you, if Black Lives Matter offends you, maybe that says more about you. And if you're Facts. willing to listen and you're willing to help, there are places you can go. Uh, we'll, I have it pinned on, on my Twitter account. Go ahead and check it out. It's uh, blacklivesmatter.card. That's two R's, that's C-O. Oh, we'll, we'll post the links. We'll be sharing it on our social medias. Uh, go ahead and help out, sign petitions. Like, go out there and protest. Donate if you can. Any kind of help, any just spreading awareness helps. Even, and even if you don't protest, just speaking up, using your using Thank your you. social media platforms, just speaking up to the what is going on and not having not sitting there being silent about it because you're afraid of what repercussions you'll get from people of your race or people that you go to work with or anything like that. Like not saying anything is just as bad as being culpable in the actions that we feel downtrodden by. So use your voice, stand up, say something, show that you're there for us and we'll stand for you like we want. It's not like you said. This is not a race war. This is a war against racism. My children are half white. I can't, like, as much as people like to say I'm a racist or I say racist shit, that doesn't make any sense because I, I wouldn't have my kids if I was. Exactly. We just want to be heard. That's it. And, and honestly, we just want to say thank you to any person that's using their white privilege or acknowledges their white privilege to help the cause. We Facts. appreciate all the supporters. And, just, just thank you. Obviously, I can never understand what RN goes through. Yes, I am in the minority. I am Mexican. But as you can see, my skin color gives me a certain privilege that I can walk away. Like, yes, I'll still be pulled over by a cop or two because they'll assume I'm Mexican or they'll see me speaking Spanish. But I can hide that by speaking English. And I can hide that with my color of my skin. I, 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 even I have a certain level of privilege that I have to acknowledge. And we have to be better. Uh, I want the Latino community to help out the black community as well because they will have our backs. Right now, it's not about us right now. Yes, we're being oppressed. Yes, we go through struggles, but it's not our time. It's not right now. It's we have to help them out when the time comes. I know the black community will be here for us, supporting us, Facts. just like we should be doing it right now. And if you're Latino, man, Call out your parents. Call out your friends. Hold them, hold them accountable for everything that's happening here. Don't let them get away with the ignorant racist stuff they say. And that includes me. I have to go ahead and hold people accountable. And I have to say my piece and make sure that I do my part to help out and spread the word. Uh, the, recently, we just saw George Floyd, the, the three officers, the three other officers, they were also charged and arrested. Mm -hmm. And George, uh, the... the um, the main officer, I forgot his name. I don't care to know his name. His uh, his, his sentence was like raised to second degree murder. Second degree murder yeah. But the job's not done, guys. Just like Kobe no. said, like we're not happy, we're not celebrating because the job's not done until they actually are locked up. And this they shouldn't convicted. keep happening. And this should, and it's not about just those four officers and getting justice for George Floyd. It's about every single person that it suffers and loses their life because of police brutality. We need to make a change and we need to be better. Um, any uh, any other thing you want to add, Aaron? No, nah, brother. You, I mean, the way you just said right there, that was that was perfect. That was it. Yeah, man. Uh, we just had to say this, say our piece real quick, um, and just make sure that you guys know that we're behind you, and we just couldn't stand by and just not not do nothing. Thank you. Um, and yeah, just just be better, guys. Black lives matter. They do, and we got to make sure that they matter if we want all lives to matter. Thank Facts. you. Facts. Stay safe. Thank you. Hey, this is Brett the Hitman Hart, and you're listening to the Smack Raw Podcast. Hey, how's it going, guys? And welcome to the Smack Raw Podcast, your one-stop shop for all your NXT, WWE, AEW recaps, reviews, pay-per-views, predictions, all that good stuff. My name is Vince. I'm your host. I'm joined by my normal co-host, Aaron Real Petty. But today, we also got, have a special guest, Donald Wood from Ring Rust Radio. How's it going, man? Thank you for being on the show. I've never been more excited for anything in my entire life. I love it. Love that enthusiasm. <laughs> putting uh, the show over. Let's go. <laughs> putting the show over from the start, man. That's how you know you have a great guest. Uh, before we talk NXT, uh, real, real quick, 
would like to let you guys know where you can find Donald. Donald, where can people find you? Obviously, Ring of Rust Radio has been around for a, a long time, but for those of you that may not know, why don't you let them know a little bit about your show? Uh, Ring Rust Radio is a wrestling podcast. It's super long, so unless you like got <laughs> on the time to kill, I don't know if it's for you. Uh, it's super obscene, so you might not like it if you don't like cursing. And I'm going to do my best not to curse here today. Where you can find me <laughs> is in the damn streets because it's this is what this world is today. So that's where I'll be. So that's how you find me. For sure. It sounds good. Obviously, you can find the show right here on YouTube.com forward slash SmackRaw podcast. You can also find us wherever you consume all your audio podcasts, Spotify, Apple Music, all that good stuff. Go ahead and check us out. We are the exclusive wrestling recap podcast for WrestlingNewsWorld.com. Check them out. They have a lot of like really dope articles, latest news, rumors, and results within the world of pro wrestling. And they just released a recent article saying why MJF should be the AEW champion right now. This is the NXT podcast, but we support all wrestling. Uh, so go ahead and check mm -hmm. it out. See what they think about it. Uh, also, RN, they could... Uh, Mean Jelly Beans YouTube channel. They can find you guys there. They also have Mean Jelly Beans memes on Facebook. Hilarious stuff. I find a bunch of their memes on my timeline just about every single day. Love it. Check that shit out, guys. Uh, but we are here to talk NXT. Overall, RN, Donald, in a nutshell, what you guys think of NXT? Go ahead, Donnie. Uh, so to jump off, I think this is, it's very important to say that this is the uh, go home episode before. Yes, tape it is. So uh, this, I wasn't expecting a ton of new character development, storyline development. This is kind of like, this is putting bows on things uh, as we go into a very important show. And I think that one of the things that made this episode a little bit different for me, because usually on Wednesdays I watch Dynamite Live and I, I record NXT and then watch NXT the next day. Since I was coming on to talk to you gentlemen, I had to be very professional. So I watched NXT. <laughs> you hated, appreciate that. <laughs> hated supporting Vince McMahon, the monster that he is with the ratings live. So I, I guess I'll just do it for one night for you gentlemen. Uh, but <laughs> night interesting is, is the main event wasn't about takeover. The main event was about Drake Maverick and tonight. And I, I feel like in wrestling, it's quite difficult to put two guys over in the yeah. same and make them both like bona fide stars coming out of it. I think mm -hmm. Drake Maverick uh, getting the contract from triple H at the very end of the show was a really a, a crowning moment for him as a performer. I liked him as Rockstar Spud and Impact Wrestling. Oh, me too. For a long time. Um, and I think that he's a good in-ring worker. I think he's a great personality. I think that he's a good promo. I, th I think that he's a good addition to any company. Uh, mm -hmm. Super creative. He did a lot of great stuff with EC3. So even in a loss, he came out as like the night's big winner. But lost in this is the storyline with, uh, with Hijo the Fantasma. Uh, because now he's NXT Cruiserweight champion, and he's also got these mask guys who kind of came in. So, like, what's coming from that? So you're right. pushing new storyline coming out of this. We got some, uh, we got some stuff coming for that. I mean, we definitely have a. Well, you've been having our conspiracy theories for like the <laughs> last couple of weeks. <laughs> we got like one of those, uh, like a hot uh, vandal, uh, how to catch a vandal, whatever. We got our fucking like string yes. boards up on <laughs> what's going on. <laughs> with this storyline for me, like, this is a great show. Like I would give it like a B. I mean, because it was a go home show, like he said, it wasn't going to be any like new stuff going on, just kind of stuff, narrowing everything out, getting to the pay-per-view. And uh, also just want to give a shout out to ring rest radio. I mean, they are the godfathers of podcasting. I mean, they're the ones that got me in to listening to wrestling podcasts. So shout out to Donald Wood, uh, Mike Kieri and BG, like literally like they are the first podcast I ever listened to. So I had to give the whole squad a shout out, bro. I'm cool. The other guys can uh, eat turds. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Put yourself over, man. I love it. Uh, yeah. I'm like uh, Triple H. Yeah, exactly, man. I mean, you got the beard to go for it, man. I mean, right now, Triple H is pulling out the beards. Just about everyone they can is busting. Hey, up. listen. Your guest show and guest spot on our show, bro. No fucking Triple H slander, bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, was about, I was about to say some awful stuff because I've been I knew you were. <laughs> Sorry. I've been watching a lot of footage of him talking to Booker T lately, and I'm I'm more offended than ever. And I watched that shit live and was offended then. And like now looking back, I'm like, this big nose ass is gonna. He's an A. I don't like him so much. I'm told, right. I was right all along. 
I'm j- I don't even go back and watch it because he's my favorite wrestler all time. So like, I literally avoid that shit at all costs. Like, I can't. I don't want to let anything destroy what I think of him. So I avoid it like the plague. We got to have some uncomfortable conversations in this. <laughs> and, uh, very true. Very <laughs> def- true. That is definitely one of them. All right. So uh, let's let's kick off with like the first match of the night, which was Candice LeRae versus Mia Yim, which setting setting up from the previous encounter last week. Uh, what you guys thought of the match? Uh, it didn't initially last too long because it went into like a brawl to the outside. It spilled there. You saw a lot of other women come and interfere and interject themselves in the match, ending in a double DQ, leading to Keith Lee and Johnny Gargano coming out for the respective significant other. And they turned into what we all thought was going to happen, a mixed tag match. I didn't think it was going to happen so soon, but we got the match. Overall, what you guys thought of it? Uh, Donald, we'll start with you, man. Right. Uh, I think the idea for me is I don't think that Joey Garbanzo, I'm sorry, Johnny Gargano, <laughs> and Candice LeRae are clicking for me as heels. Okay. I just don't feel it. I feel like Johnny Gargano, I, even more so than Johnny, it's Candice. Mm-hmm. She is the quintessential face. Uh, her run with Joey Ryan is mm-hmm. one of my favorites in the entirety of all of wrestling. Her match at the Young Bucks where she bled buckets, that was her stone cold moment for me. And she is like yeah. the quintessential face. In NXT, she was nothing but Johnny's wife until basically yep. recently. So I hate I hate that what's happening to this. I understand the feud, but I feel like the promo with Keith Lee and Mia Yim really felt flat. I felt like I want the all of these people are amazing talents, mm-hmm. but I feel like the use of each one of them is wrong here. And I feel like that while this was solid in ways, it was it was good storytelling. It was by the book, you know, color by number. It just didn't feel, didn't hear. The truth is, a go home episode is supposed to make you feel more excited for the match. Mm-hmm. I am not more excited for Joey Garbanzo versus Keith Lee. <laughs> That's just the truth. I'm just not more excited for it. I get it, man. It's uh, it's not for everyone. I've has seen some criticism saying that they don't per- they don't particularly enjoy Johnny as a heel. I didn't enjoy his initial heel run. I thought it didn't make much sense. I like the logic behind his heel turn and the logic behind Candace's. You're correct, 110 percent on their misuse of Candace up until this point. She's just been mm-hmm. Johnny's wife, and that's not who she is. She's a phenomenal wrestler in of herself, probably even better than Johnny. She just hasn't gotten the opportunity. Uh, within the confines of the story that they were telling, I like what they were doing. Uh, I'm not. I'm not looking forward to the match, per, more so than I was last week. I'm more. I'm just even keel with the match. I'm like. I'm looking forward to it because I know it's going to be good because I know the talent of the two people in that match. But personally, I'm not any more hype or any less hype. I've just been like single pace this whole time. We'll, well see what happens. And I hate to interject before the next, before we go on, but I want to say real quick. Uh, don't let me. Don't let this be misconstrued. I don't like the, the storyline really. And I don't really like the build very much, but the match between Keith Lee and Joey Garbanzo will Fire. be incredible. It could easily be match of the year. Cause Joey Garbanzo thing is one of the best in the entire world. Mm-hmm. Keith Lee, I got fired from Forbes for writing about how he's going to be a future damn star. And I'll, I'll <laughs> that hill all day. But the truth is Keith Lee is an, is a damn star. And he is waiting for a breakout moment, I think, with Joey Garbanzo on the scene to really kind of just take it to that next level. I'm so excited for that match. The match itself. The storyline yeah. build, eh, I'm whatever. But the match itself, there's no denying. I mean, I'm kind of I'm kind of there with him as far as, like, the build stuff. But my thing is, I think that it's the women that should have never been involved in this. Like, don't get me wrong. I love Candice's heel turn because, like you said, up to this point, she's just been Johnny's wife on the side. But I dig the fact that they're trying – they're at least trying to do something else and at least trying to get her to stand out apart from being his wife. Mia Yim, to me, like, I, it's a running thing on the song. Like, she is not a character. Like, dressing – like, dressing from City Trends and throwing up gang signs, that is not a character. That is just her coming out doing some shit. She's a baddie, like, fool. She's a fucking baddie. No. That's it. Again, you're right. A baddie. That's it. That's all we know about her. She looks good. And she throws up gang signs. Okay. And she dresses like she's from the streets. Yeah. This is my theme. This is my thing every week. She's dragging this shit down. She should have never been involved in it. Okay. I, said, I, I, I love Mia Yim for the record. I love Mia Yim. Mm-hmm. She's incredibly talented. I just don't 
think, and I agree with the inclusion uh, of the of the wives' girlfriends here. I just it just feels forced. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. I, I mean, you want know, you know the truth? You want to know the truth? I feel like they did this because they wanted to just surprise everybody. Because everybody thought at the end of Garbanzo Champa when we saw Scarlet and uh, carry on cross that it was going to be oh obvi- obviously it's <laughs> candace joey against uh, cross and scarlet okay. and they're right. like no hmm, swerved you and like i feel like it doesn't make sense what they did now and they're just kind of they swerved us to swerve us and at the end of the day mm-hmm. that, that usually doesn't lead to good booking fair point man fair point uh me i'm enjoying it i i like it i like a nice little change of pace for for the Johnny Gargano, Candice LeRae story that they've been telling because there's only so much you can do with him being the babyface, And it's a new avenue they're exploring. It may not be clicking for most. It, it might be clicking for a lot of people. So I'm going to let it play out. I'm more of a let's wait and see type of person and like really assess the, the situation. Like no. once we have a couple, <laughs> like, like, no. like a couple examples of what they're actually doing. Uh, but that's, first, that's how I target have, it. Have you ever been on the internet? What do you, what is this waiting? Oh, the, the, what is this waiting? You're talking oh, I'm about? A, I'm, I'm the, uh, the house is on fire right now. Person yeah, for the show. Yeah, I'm the one. That, yeah. That's, that's to my position. Like I'm the, I hated the tournament immediately. As soon as Swerve lost that first match. I was done with the cruiserweight tournament, so I, I'm th- I'm that guy on our show. Don't worry about it. I got it covered. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's talk about the end of the match. Uh, overall, the match I thought it was decent. Nothing too crazy there. Nothing really happened. I really just loved how Gargano and Ch- and uh, Champa, Gargano and Keith Lee were both wrestling in basically street clothes because you don't see that. A lot of the wrestling like standard trope is for whatever reason you're always in your gear, you're ready for a match no matter what. <laughs> so I love to see when a wrestler isn't ready, just like on SmackDown where where Sasha wasn't ready for a match and she had to wrestle in sweats and then Bailey had to go and get her like Jordans. So I love when wrestling does that because that's realistic. I'm not always going to be ready for a fight, but if I have to square up, I'll square up in whatever I'm wearing. So I, I liked what they were doing. And even Gargano trying to flee away. Uh, I thought that was very to like what the character tr- they're trying to do. The match, I love the ending of the match too, because if he's not in his street clothes, Johnny Gargano wouldn't have his keys in his pocket and he wouldn't be able to use them to rake uh, Keith Lee's eyes at the end of it as he's attempting the spirit bomb, leading to the win and the distraction from the ref, which the roll up by Candace to me again. This felt like what they should have done if they're going to advance the feud because if Mia and Keith Lee get their win right here, the feud's over. They're done. They, there's no motivation for them to continue going forward. But I, I like the booking. for in the, in the vacuum, I thought it was, it was all right. It was decent. Like you said, it was just wrapping some stuff neatly in a bow. Nothing was really too advanced. We'll see that more or less next week or the following week after TakeOver happens on Sunday. Um, what I- about NXT though, real quick, is that uh, the whole hitting him in the he hit him in the eye, right? With the mm-hmm. uh, yeah, he basically keyed him, basically <laughs> he keyed his face. That's good. That's he definitely cheated on him at one point. That's why he keyed him. Um, so that I think that the idea is with NXT, I've seen a bunch of times in the past where they play off that storyline. So maybe the story of the match that we get Sunday at in your house is Keith Lee had his damage to his eyes. So we keep seeing Joey go back to the eyes, especially yeah. the dirtiest player in the game always went for the mm-hmm. eyes, the fingers, you know what I mean? So On I'd top like of to, that, I hope to, that uh, yeah, to add to your point, uh, post-match, Johnny attacked Keith Lee's uh, hand by yeah. smashing it in between the, the steel steps. So the hand and the eyes, that could play into their match. And Absolutely. that's the one thing that I do love about NXT. Yeah, and that's the thing in WWE. We never, we never would reference that again. We'd be like, "What happened?" Yeah. I don't know. No one told me. No one talked to me. About it. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I and I love how, for whatever reason, we talk about NXT like it's its own separate pre- separate promotion, like AEW. It but it's part of a- WWE. But they do so many things that you would think main roster should be doing, but they don't. Which is one of the reasons why I do love NXT and Vince AEW. Has no idea. Vince is, it's like what happens if, like, you take your children and you're, like, play in this back room because, you know, mommy and daddy just have to go do something else for five seconds. And, like, you come back in and there's, like, everything's tore up. But, like, 
it's in a good way. You're like, oh, this is actually pretty good. It's Vince has no idea what's happening in NXT. <laughs> no, he has no he it's gem the, that kid, he the kids are jumping off the top bunk and shit, and like he doesn't know. He doesn't. <laughs> yeah, know. he has no he idea what's going on. He has no idea there was a cage match last week, kind of like the Lions Den. Has no yeah. has no damn idea. He's gonna find out about he, it like a year from now. It's like we're doing it on main roster, and then just right. completely ruin it. Yeah, that, that's well, what you'll see. He, yeah, that's what he'll learn about it. But he he had no idea who Super Bro was. Until about seven minutes ago, and he's like, "Who's this guy? Who's Kurt <laughs> Angle talking about?" It's yeah. <laughs> totally, man. Uh, so some some guy, uh, one guy on NXT that we know about, and this Vince knows a lot about, is Dexter Loomis. He had an interview in NXT. Uh, basically, the interviewer was basically trying to get his thoughts on the Cole Velveteen Dream match, on whether or not he felt like Dream, Adam Cole, who was going to win. And instead of answering, he just stays there all quietly and starts uh, getting to, like, this art, like, poster thing. Like, he's about to start drawing. We come back, like, two or three commercial breaks afterwards, and he draws this, like, caricature of him driving a truck with Undisputed Era in the back. I, I love Dexter Loomis. This stalker stand gimmick for Undisputed this, Era, I'm feeling it. Uh, Donald, personally, how do you feel about Dexter Loomis and the storyline that they're doing with him in Undisputed Era? Uh, well, in terms of Dexter Loomis, uh, I liked him uh, in TNA uh, mm-hmm. when same kind of gimmick uh, with Christy Hemi. I think the story with Christy Hemi, if you go back and kind of look at some of the stuff he did there, um, it was very reminiscent of what, what's happening here. I think that what he did there was absolutely awesome. Super underrated. Uh, his ring work has gotten better since then, which kind of equals out to what we're doing here a little bit. I love the idea of him staying silent. He's like Bob Ross and Ted Bundy combined. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I'm with that. I didn't know I needed that in my life. But, yeah, I love Bob Ross. is a calming spirit for me, and I love him. This is uh, probably right. one of the, the least – the least segments that I liked as far as the Dexter Loomis stuff goes, but when it comes to him, it doesn't matter what he does. Like, again, this is another running thing on our show. Like, we are all fucking in on Dexter Loomis. Like, the, the from the very first time when they had the creepy light on him when he was in the on the side of the ring to it's like everything. They, our joke on here is like it's like when he hyenas say Mufasa's name and like say it again, like, Mufasa. That, like that's how we look at Dexter <laughs> Loomis and that creepy shit. And I'm here for it, bro. Yeah. So. Uh, so- I'll say this, and I know um, we're kind of looking forward to the takeover a little bit. I, uh, I, I'm i very interested. He's obviously going to play a role in that yeah. whole uh, match with Velveteen Dream. And my, my thought is, my gut was, I think that he's going to cost Dream the match mm-hmm. because he cost Dream the match before, right? right. But after thinking about it, and he's talking more about the actual Undisputed Era and like how they're tied up and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I could see him like literally abducting them away so they're not going to interfere in the match. And he's the uh, one who helps. Dream that's what I was win. thinking. Yeah, He helps dream win. Cause dream, this is a caveat. I mean, you go back to JYD in the mid South territory. And it's like, every time you had a caveat where like, you can't get the championship. If you don't beat this guy, he won. Yeah. He won those matches because it's like, everybody's like, no F that I want him to win. And I think that, I, I want him to win, and I think now is the time for Dream to win. He doesn't have to hold the title for very long, but he he has to hold the title. It just instantly legitimizes him. You're building a star of the future again. He's 24 years old. He said it himself. Yeah, right. You get the title wow. now, and he's he's like Randy Orton made, except he ain't shitting in bags, so he's going to be. Way <laughs> so yeah. like, My I thing with the idea. Too, that's all I was thinking. Uh, like him throwing them in the back of one of those like white raper vans, like and just pulling off with them all in the back of it. Yeah, that's, a, that's all I could think about when he drew that thing. Like, like, come on, he's about to throw him in the back of the van. No, I'm gonna stop you right there because I'll, I'll hand, I'll, I'll hold my tongue on a lot of things in life, but a white a conline van is a good vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good place you can hold. Bill screams, "Do you want some candy?" That's all I'm saying. All I'll say this: as a married man, it's a place to sleep when you get kicked out. You know what I mean? Man, <laughs> right there, it's like a bed on wheels. Okay, I agree with you, man. I, I agree. With you. So we'll see. I like your theory, Donald. I don't know if it'll play too much of a factor. I think we're we might be just booking our own stuff and just fantasy booking and then we might not just get it it might just be as simple as he costs the stream the title because uh 
I don't legit know where this match is going to go. It could be Adam Cole retaining or Dream uh, getting the title and then dropping it for a bit or just holding it for a good spell. Because I have been hearing, like, I mean, I'm no, like, you know, like inside or anything, but I've been seeing like online that Dream has been the name that's been floated to be going to main roster imminently following Matt Riddle, along with Io Shirai, Chelsea Green, all these names to be going to main roster. Uh, I've also heard Undisputed Era as a whole going to Raw. So I wouldn't be surprised to see either of these guys walk away with the title. I, it, it could be in any any kind of way. I don't know where it's going to go. But we did get announced that it's going to be a backlog brawl or something. Like, basically yeah. a parking lot brawl because – they had like the whole like recap for their match, like trying to hype it up and Velvet it's Sky Piper Gold does, bro. No, 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 no. It's it's Cena Eddie from like two thousand five. Yes, yeah. they fought, when they fought and all the cars were like mm-hmm. circled around them and yeah. stuff. Like yeah. it's gonna feel like that. It's not gonna be a backlap brawl. Okay, WrestleMania twelve, Dusty uh, Gold Dust. And Piper is one of the best matches ever. Truly, from the <laughs> bottom of my heart, I mean that because it's just like it's so. The, much re- the, the only reason why I said that is that Dream ha- gives off so many Gold Dust vibes, and it's and now it's not as controversial though. But that's the only reason why. When as soon as they said back back a lot brawl, that's immediately what I thought about. But I, I went straight to that. Regal mentioned spotlights, right? So as soon as he yeah. said that about the headlights of cars, because when Eddie fought Cena that time. They had all the cars in a circle with all the lights on it. Like, it was some, like, street fighting movie from the 80s. And, like, I'm watching the Warriors and stuff. From Lionheart. <laughs> yeah, like, Lionheart with John Campbell. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's like some street fighting. It's, the, like, the original fight club. But I'm, I'm down for that. I'm, da- I'm down for a, a, a different – it's going to be film cinematic style, just like WWE's been doing. Uh, mm-hmm. um, so I, that's going to be awesome. Yeah, and it does look like NXT does like a different take than WWE. WWE likes to lean a little bit more towards the comedy, lighthearted stuff about cinematic matches. Uh, NXT, as you saw with Gargano and Champa, they went a more serious tone, similar to the to the Boneyard match. So but, I'm interested to see what they'll what it'll be overall. Was that I? Th- I felt like see. I think that NXT. I think this has to be serious. But I think that what what I like about WWE is I did well. I didn't like the Money in the Bank match very much. They I didn't. Some, I didn't either. Yeah, they, but they went a comedic. You guys route don't like fun. I understand <laughs> why they did it because there's so many spots you can do, and I just didn't. I thought a lot of it was really cheesy. But Steph getting herself over, you know, whatever. I'm not going to yeah. yell about it again. Um, but I, <laughs> think that, uh, I truly believe that that NXT is the product where I expect the most my expectations are the highest from Mm -hmm. wwe so i feel like it's a it's a serious view that the championships on the line so i feel like there may be a spot or two where it's like you're supposed to laugh like Mm -hmm. but i i feel like overall the tone is going to be very serious and it should be for yeah, sure. it definitely should be. It's a serious match. Uh, they it's been leading up for like a long time. Undisputed Era basically took out Dreams and tried to end his career and cost him the North American title way back when. So we'll and we'll see much, what happens. How much would Dream winning right now mean? How much do we need Dream winning right now? I don't know, man. I've kind of turned the corner on Dream, and I'm like backing the Keith Lee train. And I'm at a point where if anybody beats Cole for that title, I want it to be Keith Lee. So that's where I've kind of, I've kind of changed my stance since Survivor Series. You on? I don't know what to say. I want to yell at you, but I almost <laughs> for you. Like get back the, on the uh, dream train. The it's dig like, pics oh. is kind of what threw us off here. No, 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 no. I, I wanna I wanna preface this by saying that it was legit. Keith Lee's push during that Survivor Series, like like uh, all brand warfare thing that made me realize, no, Keith Lee is the bigger star that I like. I would much rather see him be the one to dethrone Adam Cole for that title and be the one that takes all the titles from Undisputed Era because he did start with the North American title and he was like instrumental in like the tag scene for a minute there for the tag titles. I want to see, see him do it. And I think if it, if it really is dream that's being called up to either raw or SmackDown, he's not getting the title. So like you got to build, you, you have to do a thing where you build the foundation for NXT. And if that's dream fine, but, and, and I'm with it, I'll, 
I'll see how it goes. But me personally, I've jumped on the Velvet from the Velveteen bandwagon and decided I'm hitching my ride to Keith Lee and the rest <laughs> of his career. I fully support this guy because I feel like he might transcend like more than dream because there's more of a chance of him being ruined by Vince McMahon and main. That's, that's what I, that's Once what he I gets was going to Raw say. And Smackdown, there's less of a chance for Keith Lee to be butchered by WWE main roster and Vince McMahon. That's he's going to be, why. they're going to put him with a Chuck or some shit and have him getting married on SmackDown. Once he goes up to raw, like I, they're going to destroy him. They don't know how to de- They don't know how to deal with actual real, real world issues that wrestlers are. So like a uh, metrosexual kind of, borderline homosexual character there they they there's only one or two ways that they do they either completely bury it and screw it all up and just for, pretend like it's not there or they go the other way where he's wearing lipstick and glitter head to toes shining and shit and looking like a disco ball and then he starts wearing a uh, scuba steve suit like uh shinsuke and shit that that's the part i'm scared of with dream like me personally i think he's more charismatic i think he's got a better move so i think he it, to me I see more potential in him plus his age, but I'm just scared of what they're going to do once he gets on the main roster. All right. That is – hold on real quick. That is a completely fair assessment of mm-hmm. the WWE's main roster screwing up talent. But I think – and this is just me, and this is, this is not ignoring, but nothing has been substantiated about anything that was claimed about Velveteen Dream before, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So – I, and we have to address that just because it is what it is. But nothing yeah. has been substantiated, and nothing ever came of that. So I'm just going to have to yeah, say <laughs> some, some bad person on Reddit said some dumb stuff, and, you know, that's what happens sometimes. This is a world where, like, you mm-hmm. gotta got to go through this, and you got to go through the process. But the truth is nothing ever came of it, but it doesn't change the fact that that 24-year-old kid, he's got more charisma in his damn pinky than most freaking – I'd say 96% of the people on the damn roster right now. By he, far. He's good in the ring, and he could be great as he gets older. So yeah. to me, I see that he's got so much charisma. He's got so much potential. I don't care what the main roster does. He's going he's gonna to overcome it, and he's going to be the bigger star. I think Keith Lee suffers from a little bit of a lack of uh, elite personality, where he's like, yeah. one of them, he's super entertaining, and he's a great in-ring worker. But I feel like he could get, like, the Apollo Crews treatment on the main roster where he's there, put a smile on his face, everybody's having a good time. But it's, there's no substance. There's no meat on the bone. And until now Apollo's got some meat on the bone, I thought, and that's what I've been waiting for. Right. But, like, with, with Keith, I feel like he's getting there, they put a smile on his face, and he's just a good guy. And there's no – it's Superman. Right. Superman is boring. I want a little depth. I want a little bit of yeah. a back. No, I, I mean, I agree with you, but, I mean, we'll see. Time will tell. Yeah, man. Hey, I mean, they're both bona fide stars. Let's go on both trains. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah. Both, they're both studs, man. So I, I'm just more of a Keith Lee guy. He's just, like, won me over over the time. Uh, you were talking about you have high expectations for NXT and their matches. What were your expectations for Tony Nese versus Isaiah Swerve Scott here, Donald? Because I know, I know RN's answer. I just want to get your quick thoughts. Like, did you have any expectations for this match? Um, so I, I don't know who's I, I don't know who swerve person is. A kill shot, uh, yeah. kill shot, one of the best in the world. Um, I absolutely Chase love him Franklin. with all my heart, right? Uh, and I think that uh, Tony Nese is very talented. I've saw Tony Nese a million times uh, when I was watching House of Hardcore for all those years. Uh, but I think that uh, both men are extremely talented, but I, you know. It is. It's NXT. This is there's the, there's ups and there's downs. I watch AEW for <laughs> reason. Uh, uh, RN, uh, you're a big Tony guy. You love Swerve. You, we kind of knew this match was leading to this, yeah. given what happened. You know, Tony Nese costing Swerve the opportunity to win his match versus Jack Gallagher and advancing to the finals. Um, what do you think of the match? Uh, did you have was, any expectations for it, though? Yeah, I, did, I thought it was going to be a dope match, and it was. I mean, they're both excellent in the ring. My mm-hmm. thing with the, with NXT is they hold both of these. Well, Tony needs his man. He needs a fucking character change. Just generic uh, Neville costume person, whatever he's pretending to be. is. He's been that for, what, how many years in, in WWE now? Four years now? Same ring gear. Same, that's what I'm saying. Like, that shit needs to go. He needs to just... Get rid of it, start from scratch, put some pants on, turtleneck, something. Like, he needs to figure that part out. 
sure. and then Swerve and like Swerve, like he has his own podcast. He has his own music and shit. Like he has personality. He has charisma. I don't understand why it doesn't. I don't know if it's just because they haven't given him enough time on the mic to show it, or it just isn't translating through what he's doing now. But I mean, he has it there. Like to me, like how you guys looked at Keith Lee and and uh, Velveteen. Like that's how I look at Swerve. Like I think he could be a future world champion. Like I have that much. I have that much faith in what he can do. So right. he finally got a fucking win after a month and a half of taking L's. So that's always a good thing, I guess. I'll tell you the truth, and I mean this about the bottom of my heart. Kill shot. Um, in Lucha Underground was literally one of the reasons why I tuned in every single week. And yeah. that was that uh, the Wrath of War match or whatever it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I forget. With, uh, what Aztec Warfare, maybe? Yeah. yeah. So, no, no, not Aztec Warfare. It was something because it was because uh, they were both military guys. Mm-hmm. I forget who he fought. It was him and A.R. Fox. They had like a. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the match. I forget what his name was in Lucha, though. Um, uh. It was like De'Aaron Fox or some shit like that. It was some yeah, Fox, it, though. But. That match, that match made me realize that you're right. He he is world champion material, and he yeah. he is legitimately. And I saw him in Evolve. He did amazing things in Evolve, and he was. I, I agree. I just don't know if NXT agrees. Right. Exactly. I mean, That's where I'm at now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. We don't know, but uh, the match overall, like like RN was saying, it was a really good match. I loved how the, from the jump it had it was very intense from Swerve's side. You know, he's mad that his, his chance to be cruiserweight champion was cost at the hands of Tony Nice. Uh, towards the end, though, uh, Jack Gallagher comes out, tries to distract uh, Swerve while he's on the turnbuckle, gets hit by Tony Nice. Tries to hit. I forgot what he was trying to hit him with, but Swerp does reverse it into a roll-up win. Gets the win despite the odds, and it looks like they might be moving in a program with Jack Gallagher and him. Or how many times Jack are they gonna team them two up together? They've been teamed up together on every goddamn show. I don't think. I don't think they're gonna be teamed up. I think it's. I think it's them transitioning Tony Nese versus Swerve to Swerve versus Jack Gallagher. And they're just giving someone for Swerve to fight going forward. All I know is every stop that Tony Nese has been at, they put in with some random person. Like, why is him and why is him and uh, Gallagher? Like, why? Like, like why? I don't... I, I'm just going to go ahead and say, and I'm, I'm going to be the bad guy. I love Tony Nese. I think he's great in the ring, but he's pretty bland and boring to me yeah. on what I've seen on WWE. He might be like a great wrestler, like, and he is. But personality-wise, even when he was in the Cruiserweight Classic and they were yeah, nothing. himself, like, nothing stood out to me. He was a very bland, generic guy compared to the rest of the crop in that tournament. And even to, to now, like, when he won the Cruiserweight title off of Buddy Murphy, I wasn't high on it because he doesn't click to me as a babyface. And as a heel, he's too one-dimensional. He needs something. Mm-hmm. You're right. I, I, I don't know what that is. I uh, do. What? Seth Rollins. Ooh. A disciple. That's a nice one. Mm-hmm. I'll sit on that one for. I'll sit, that's, that, a, that's, that. I'll sit on that one. Sit on but, it. Sit on it all night, dude. It's all you. <laughs> all right. Uh, but uh, let's move on uh, to the triple threat tag team match to determine the number one contender for the NXT tag team titles. Uh, we had Undisputed Era versus Only Lurkin and Danny Birch with a mystery third team, and I know where you stand on this, RN. You didn't like it, but we start off, we start seeing a lot of like space intro stuff. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? And my sister that hasn't even watched NXT in months, it's like, what the fuck is going on on NXT? The intro was dope. Their intro was dope. That's about where it stops. It, it's revealed that it's Breezango. There, this is like their third or fourth Chippendale like stripper dancer uh, gimmick costume that they come out to. I freaking love Breezango. I thought this was hilarious. I thought it was good because I feel like NXT needs a little bit of like you can't be like the super serious show one hundred percent of the time. You need like stop gaps in there because it, it just it feels more or less the same thing. A lot of critiques from NXT have come there like, oh, he's just generic, really good wrestler guy, number five. And then going against super good wrestler, number three. And a lot of these guys don't have characters. So when they allow NXT to bring in some characters like Breezango, I think it adds a breath of fresh air. It added to the match because even though Undisputed Era are really, really good, it, uh, only Larkin and Danny Bridge for me are kind of stale and boring. I, they feel very generic. Nothing about them for me stands out. I know they're going to put on a good match, but character-wise, they're not giving me anything. 
They're just two generic given creative time, wrestlers. To be they fair, they're not given the time to give anything. They're, no, they're, 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 there to, they're there to give the, whoever the next champ is or the number one contenders, they're there to give them a tough match to prop them up. They are – they're top they're, – they're, I guess they're uh, main event jobbers. That's, that's the best way to describe and, them. And that's they're, a fair, very fair point. They are who Cesaro is. They're a tag team version. Yeah. And I hate that. Genuinely, C- Cesaro yeah. has given me more than only Larkin and Danny Birch. I don't, think he, I don't think he's saying like that. Why I'm saying like what what the role is that Cesaro does. Cesaro's the same thing. He's the prop guy. He's to yeah. make whoever the next guy up is look good, give a good match, take him to the limits. But in the end, he's going to lose. That's what Larkin is. Doing. I would argue that Cesaro from the get go and even to this day now still feels like there's a slimmer of hope to be like a world champion material. At no, no point, at no point that I ever see only Larkin and Danny Birch as tag team champions material. If they were, they'd be just transitional champions. I've never saw them as anything uh, than what they currently are. But that's that's still champions. Like tra- there are many many of the people. So we're just Domino. Yeah. Do you remember them? <laughs> I swear to God, yo, don't you. F- don't you dare reference Deuce and Domino <laughs> in my presence again and then act like they're not good because Deuce and Domino are one of the most ta- most underrated tag teams. Do you know Cherry Bomb? Remember her? Yeah, I love yeah. Cherry. Or Cherry well, – no, Cherry Bomb was uh, – That's Allie. That's Allie now. Yeah. Cherry something che- or other. Yeah, yeah, I'm Cherry. Sure. All I know is one of them was Snooka's kid. I know that much about Yeah, him. that was, uh, I think, Sim Snooker, the one with the, with, like, the darker skin and the slick back mm-hmm. hair. Now, I, I know what you're talking about, but I'm just making a joke, saying for the most part, nine times out of ten wrestling fans don't remember Deuce or Domino. Like, like they're, they're going to be some really hardcore Deuce and Domino fans out there, uh, apparently. Uh, but, <laughs> but, but for the most part, you're not going to remember them. Listen, and, all I'm saying about Orny Lurkin and them is that from Reno 911, when Dangle got those white boots and he comes out the store and clicks his heels, <laughs> That's all I could think about. That was the most character development I've seen from only Lorcan since Luke. his debut. The truth is, the truth is, uh, from an in-ring perspective, uh, I don't know of two people who hit harder. Like, I, I would put Cesaro in with them. If you put yeah. the three together, you might have the most hard-hitting trio in. Like, Minoru Suzuki, Zack Sabre Jr., and you put, like, you know, somebody else on that from that group with yeah. them. And, like, that's maybe comparable, but mm-hmm. truthfully. Like, from an in-ring perspective, they're a different breed. They're an old school. Let me talk yeah. about the revival. They're an old school. Like, they're old school. They just, like, want to – they would just want yeah, to – they want they're, those, they're like the Steve Austin before he became Stone Cold. They're, they're the hand you put the next guys in the ring with to prove that the team is tough and that they can kick ass. You put them in with Orny Lorcan and them to prop those guys up. Mm-hmm. I mean, but, that's that's it. Have you ever watched a match with them involved and thought like, "Oh, that wasn't that good of a match"? They no, put on no. every time, and they they go. I always look at RVD. RV. Everybody always said, "If you're going to wrestle RVD, you're going to come out with a busted mouth. You're going to come out. He's doing hard way. He's going to uh, he's going to he's going to lay it into you. These guys, they lay it into you. It yeah. looks real. It looks like they're beating the hell out of somebody. They're and they're I, a prop team for sure. They're a prop I'll team. Say this. I agree with the idea that NXT is way too serious sometimes. I love AEW. That's my show. And one of the reasons I love AEW so much is because it is – I'm looking for a release when I watch when I watch wrestling. You know what I mean? It, it, it depends on what kind of movie you – if you like a serious drama movie, mm-hmm. maybe you prefer NXT. Man, when I'm I'm looking for you know I'm looking for Super Troopers. I'm looking for Friday. I'm looking for movies that make me laugh. Again, I'm looking for movies that keep me entertained and di- divert me from real life. Well, you picked the wrong two guys because I'm telling you right now, I'm that old school Clint Eastwood, get off my line shit. <laughs> okay. Take that funny shit on somewhere. I want to see some asses get kicked. <laughs> okay. too, but I think that wrestling, I always looked at wrestling like this. Wrestling is a carnival. These are carnivals. Yeah. So you're going to have the house, the, the scary house, and then you're going to have the, the funny mirror oh, no. house, yeah. and then you have this, and you're going to have a, a menagerie of things. Well, trust that- me, I get this, I get this tone to, told to me every day because I am the old man of wrestling. <laughs> I don't want the comedy. Like, I can take some comedy shit here and there, but the comedy stuff is not my thing. So trust me, I get these guys Did you hate me St- shit about it. Did you hate I- the state stampede? No, I thought that shit was awesome. I really did. Like, I liked the whole, everything about it. But then what's the problem here? Uh, 
RN just likes to complain and give me a hard time when he knows that I like somebody and he knows I like Breezango and he just wanted to shit on them. So uh, let's talk about the match though. I thought it was a good match. It, it wasn't it like was a good match. It wasn't like any like takeover quality level match, but I thought overall the match was really, really good. And at one point it did look like Undisputed Era towards the end was getting the upper hand until mm-hmm. that sneaky Dexter Loomis in the crowd just staring and stalking Undisputed Era again. That that allowed to change the dynamic of the match. Mm-hmm. The match was a win for Breezango. They hit it with the beauty shot last dance combination. Uh, I'm underselling the match because we can't go beat by beat on the match. Yeah. I love the match. I thought the right winners won here because it looked like it was going to go into Oni Lorkin and Danny Birch versus Imperian, and it looks like they're sidetracking and giving us a more interesting matchup. For me, because the the contrast in styles, you had the very serious and, and all business Imperium versus the goofy, but can get the job done in the ring, Breezango. And my thing is, see, with Tyler Breeze, like, I think a lot of it, too, why I hate it so much is that I think that he's dope as shit in the ring, and I think that his heel work is Mm -hmm. amazing as well, too, and then getting lumped in with Fandango, who also, I think, has potential to be a good heel. Like, it doesn't... I can understand where you can keep your gimmick and try to be the pretty boys and all that shit, but it doesn't have to be funny comics shit all the time. Well, they're baby faces, shit. man, so they, they well, have I to mean, keep even, everybody happy. But even when they were heels, it was still like goofy heel shit, and they were chicken shit heels on the run most of the time. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, they never really had any any type of, like, seriousness to their character, regardless if they were heel or face, is what I'm well, saying. Without going to... That's just my to back. Be- that's just me. Without going too deep into it, I will say that, unfortunately, Tyler Breeze was, like, in the right place at the wrong time with NXT because mm-hmm. it, he was being pushed towards the top of the card right when guys like Finn Balor, Joe, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin Owens, Owens Kevin, Joe, yeah. Sami Zayn, all those guys were coming in, and he was just slowly moved down to the card. And the North American title, had it been around when he was in NXT, I feel like he would have already been a champion. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're right. He should be a champion of some sort. I- before it's all said and done. I won't say I told you so, but I remember getting a lot of trash from a lot of people with the ring rust side uh, about when John Cena was doing his open challenge. I thought when, because they called Tyler Breeze up then and they just let him just lose and he was nothing. Mm -hmm. I said he should have been the one to beat John Cena for the United States Championship. And that would have made him in the shade like lemonade. And I would he would have been set in, in stone and... Now, I mean, I, it's good what he's doing, but I feel like, I, listen, Brazongo, when they were doing stuff on SmackDown, I was loving it, man. It was mm-hmm. so much fun. The whole comedy bit, I was, I was, I, I love that kind of stuff. The problem is now you're revisiting something that doesn't feel organic anymore. It's yeah. Really forced. I felt like they, when they, when they were revealed as like the surprise of this match, I'm going to be honest with you. I love them, but I was let down. Mm. <laughs> I, thought get, okay. I thought we were going to get something because when you told me I had only Lorcan and Danny Birch against uh, um, the Undisputed, Undisputed Era. Era, I know that I'm going to have an amazing technical match, and that's what I come to NXT for. That's kind of AEW. I do the fun stuff. NXT, I come for the the. the I think they, this match did delivered on the technical side of stuff things as well. For sure, it it did, but it didn't. But my disappointment was that no I can't, wow like, factor. It's like Pulp Fiction. I can't hide my emotions. Mm-hmm. When he came, when they came out as like the Spaceman thing, I was like, okay, like this didn't add anything to the match for me at that moment. It didn't feel like it was like better because I was expecting something like Blockbuster, like check out this tag team we haven't seen yet. Come on, check man. There, there's no tag team that's going to debut anytime. <laughs> yeah. so they just like go like 25 different people. They're not going to hire someone new. Um, I, I get, I get what you're saying. Uh, I think it's just like it's what your personal preference is and how you feel about mm-hmm. Rizango because I know RN he he doesn't hate them but he just wasn't feeling it. For me, I pop. I'm not gonna lie. I saw Rizango. I'm like, what the fuck is this? And then I pop. I was like, oh yeah, I want them to win. Then they actually won the match and I popped even more afterwards. Uh, again, it, again, it's just one of those things where like it really just depends on where you view them and how you feel about a certain person. Me personally, I, I thought it delivered, and I liked the ending of the match with uh, with Dexter Loomis still stuck in Undisputed Era. That's definitely leading somewhere. But yeah. uh, quickly, let's just just because it happened, uh, let's talk about Elia versus Santana Garrett. 
okay win for Santana Garrett. Nothing of note really happened here. It was it was all right. It was just a to advance the storyline of what Robert Stone is and what he's doing. So basically, Chelsea Green kicked him to the curb, and he's no longer with him. And he, I guess, hasn't slept in like two weeks. Or it looked like, like he was an like, Avenger. Yeah, yeah. He looked like he hadn't slept in like a week. He looked like he was having a rough go at it. He comes down to scout at Leah. Maybe he can like try to get her on his side, and maybe he can salvage Robert Stone Brand. But it, things are looking rough for Robert Stone Brand. But that was a solid win for Santana and Gary. I'm surprised she yeah. came out. Uh, nothing to note here. Uh, we're gonna move on, and we're t- talking yeah. I'm sorry, let's skip it. Yeah, I want to say one. Th- I want to say one thing. Yeah. How is it that Santana Garrett isn't a bigger star in a major company right now? I thought when she first got there, they should should have skipped her up. Uh, It's anybody Impact, um, AEW. Like I don't know. I just don't get it, man. Like she's got the look, she's got the charisma. Like I felt like she was like easy made in the shade. Seriously, like I just thought it was going to be such a slam dunk that she was going to be a star wherever she went. And I just she hasn't like latched on anywhere. Man. It's just really weird, right? I, I don't know. It, mm-hmm. It's it could be a thing where she just hasn't found the right spot just yet, uh, or it could be just a thing where like, may, may, we don't know. Maybe she's like not a good person to work with. Uh, I'm not. I'm not trying to wow. start anything. I'm not trying to start <laughs> rumors because <laughs> you heard seems, it here first, dude. <laughs> she seems great. She seems great. I mean, for for the longest time, we were wondering about Braun Strowman, why he hasn't gotten the title, why they like mess him up so much. And then we come to realize that he's actually not the easiest person to deal with backstage because he's not reliable or something. Maybe it's just a case where she just hasn't gotten her break. It could be any number. Who said Braun's not reliable? You sent him to me. You sent them down to me, and you let me freaking handle them. Braun Strowman's one of the best superstars WWE's got. I'm dying on that hill. Ass. We, we, we're we not going there, Donald. Warren. <laughs> no, no. We, we, we're, we're, not touching, we're not touching that topic. We're going we're gonna to move like, on. Like, like Braun Strowman's brother if he had, like, problems. <laughs> His brother with a drinking problem? Yeah. As he chugged a bottle of whiskey? <laughs> well, look. Uh, I don't have anything nice to say about Braun Strowman at the moment, so I'm not going to say anything at all, and I'm going to leave it at, leave it as that. Uh, you raised correctly. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so we'll see what happens to Santana. I totally agree with what you're saying. I think she's a great wrestler. Uh, she just needs something. She just needs something. I don't know what it is. Um, the NXT Women's Triple Threat recap we had next, Rhea Ripley, she was talking about her – her whole story of why she challenged Charlotte at WrestleMania. That was supposed to be her moment. And what I liked about it was that you had a bunch of different other people talking about this match, hyping it up, just like a UFC fight. And they did the same with the Velveteen Dream and Cole match. And then you have Io Shirai's aspect. They're trying to, like, talk about her. Sexy as fuck. Oh, my God. Phenomenal. He's up, up, man. (laughs) And then uh, you have uh, Charlotte's take on this whole thing, how she didn't appreciate how fans Can I just say one thing? Yeah. The fact the fact that they were showing like her first NXT match and what she looks like now, two separate fucking people. And if uh, two separate fucking people, I was I had to do like a double take. Like, who's this bitch in the ring? Oh, that's what Charlotte used to look like. Beautiful, both people beautiful in God's yes. record. Uh, <laughs> and I mean, honestly. Hey, listen, do whatever you want to do. She's improving herself in her eyes, and that's wonderful. I think it's one. I'm clapping. I'm clapping. I just didn't realize it was that drastic. She even got the mole cut off and everything, bro. Look, hey, I'm a, <laughs> all I'm going to say about the whole thing if is that. Money, hold on. If I had the money to fix my face, I would too. Facts. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and say this. Uh, as a guy that, like, you know, I don't like every single feature about myself. If I could change it, I probably would. So one mm-hmm. thing I'd probably you know, do is probably make sure I have a fantastic set of teeth and have yeah. like the nice, <laughs> nice pearly whites I can possibly get. So I totally get it, man. If if it makes her feel better and that's for her, go ahead and do it. This wasn't for us. I like, just wasn't a, a ready for that drastic of a change. I didn't realize. No, it I, I, I remember. I, I I was like in the front 
front uh front of the NXT movement before I was even on the network. I was watching on Hulu. That's how bored I was that I would want to watch extra wrestling. I didn't know about New Japan that much. Or I wasn't that in tune with my indie wrestling scene, all these other sites where I can watch all this great wrestling. I would stumble into Hulu one one time and I just found NXT content in there. I'm like, I wonder what this is. And I've been hooked ever since, even before the network, even before before right. level. So I've been watching before that. So uh so the the change was and too drastic for me. I've been watching her career and everybody else in NXT for a minute. So I like the match. I'm geeked. I think this is the match that might go ahead and steal the show. Uh, this could be the best match of the night. People that, like to talk. People like to hate on Charlotte because she's over saturated. She's overexposed. But here's the thing: she's really fucking good. Right. I give her. She's oh, she's earned in my eyes the honor of Miss WrestleMania because she doesn't have a bad WrestleMania match. The only match that you could say wasn't really good was the main event with uh, Ronda and Becky. And you can attribute that more or less to maybe Becky and Ronda not having the chemistry because even her match with Rhea Ripley was really, really good at, at this past year's WrestleMania. So I'm looking forward to that match. Um, also, let me say something real quick. Um, so I think that if this isn't the match, it, it, we've gotten to the point where, like, with Evolution, you're like, wow, look at this. We were talking, like, wow, look at the women main eventing. How incredible. Yeah. I think it's a testament to how goddamn good the women have been and how, like, finally they're getting a platform in WWE after way too long. Mm-hmm. Because now, if they're not the best match of the night, I'm going to be pissed off because right. they have <laughs> the best match of the night. I, they, they have the, all three women have the talent to become um, top stars, not just male, female, they're just the top stars in the yeah. company. And I feel like all three are superior in ring workers. So I am fully expecting this to be the match of the night. And if not, I'll be disappointed. Well, and that's that's the hard part of uh, NXT is that just about any match can be the match of the night. Mm-hmm. I, it could be the opener. Like you saw, I don't remember what takeover it was, but Velveteen Dream versus Aleister Black to this day is one of my favorite NXT matches of all time. It's so good. Just the character versus- work. I think, so what? right? I, I think a- so. I think it might have been. It might have been. I'm not too sure. But it, you say Velveteen right, Dream that's versus that's Black, the- and you know which one. That's the say my name one, right? And he yes. says his name. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. one of my favorite matches ever. That storyline was incredible. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so uh, before we go ahead, uh, talk about the main event. Let's address quickly the Cameron Grimes Bronson rematch. Solid match. It uh, ended it ended toward, it ended quickly towards the end with a cave in after like a miss top rope splash. I think he was what he was attempting. I'm not exactly sure what. No, nah, he's was. doing this mushroom stomp thing. He just didn't get it off because the dude it, the dude was too fucking big. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, so it was Ronson Reed that was at the top. Row. Oh, right. yeah, yeah. He and did then, try to do the foul splash. He tried to do like some sort of splash, missed yeah, it, and then they, he hits the cave in. He didn't hit it fully. It looks like it was more or less his knees driven into his yeah. chest. But he did get the win. And the way they were selling the cave in, they're really building it up as this move that can finish a match out of nowhere and i think his previous matches it's been it's been shown that like even with finn balor like oh like you just get distracted for a second he can hit this cave and he can beat just about anybody it's he's still only lost one match right he's only got one loss yeah, on NXT. his only loss has been a north american title keith match lee. against keith lee yeah so they're building him up very solidly and i like that post match post match we saw karen cross comes out uh Cameron Grimes, he scurries on out, and Bronson Reed just gets wrecked by Karen Cross. Talks to the uh, talks to the mic, uh, to the camera, and says this match is going to be special. TikTok, not, not, nothing too much of substance, but he got his point of pro- across, trying to send a message to Tommaso Ciampa. Are you looking forward to this match, uh, Donald? Uh, yeah, dude. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I'll say this first about Cameron Grimes. Uh, I love him. I love mm-hmm. Trevor. Trevor Lee is one of my favorites. Yep. Um, I personally am trying to bring back a, a kind of slickish Stevie Ray Vaughan cowboy hat. I'm like, <laughs> okay. She makes she thinks it makes me look trashy, like white trashy, but you know what? I'm trying to bring it back. I don't care. Um, <laughs> with that said, with that said, he is incredible and I love him to death. I yeah. like Brian Reed a lot too. I wish he had a little bit more going on, but mm-hmm. I think it's a hiding your time kind of deal. Take a couple L's before you take a couple dubs. But um, but here, here's, here's the thing: of, he's only taking the one L though. Uh, carry on cross, uh-huh. killer cross is incredible. Yeah, 
Definitely. And I like the dynamic with him and Scarlet. I feel like she mm-hmm. adds a little bit to his mystique, makes him feel more special than he actually already is. Uh, I was saying that I like the the combination of Scarlet with him. I feel like that adds to his presentation and his package and his aura all, all around. Yeah. I think it adds a lot. So I'm really... Well, my, Go ahead. I was going to say, my thing is too, like, for some reason, even with... with uh, some a grown man we're supposed to call Thick Boy, which I will not do, but this is the best. I will like, call him Thick Boy. I will call him <laughs> Thick Boy. I don't care. <laughs> but this was the best that I think Karrion's looked like actually like in the ring. Like his move actually did look like it looked like he could take somebody out with. And I think I, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but with the bigger, heavier guy, mm-hmm. I think he looked more believable with his moves and his power than he did with those little tiny ass guys he was just kind of like tossing around. Like it, it looked he looked like he was he was gonna break Bronson Reed's neck. Like I, I, I took it a lot more serious than I have his past like squash matches and shit. For so sure, like, uh, it, and it wasn't really a squash match because they made no, it, it was just they made Bronson Reed like, it feel like a threat, and then and then they per- presented it like it was Bronson Reed made a mistake, and that mm-hmm. split second allowed Cameron Grimes to hit that finish. They were really building it up similar to like the RKO, like it could be hit out of nowhere, it can be just about anybody. No, I was talking more about Karen Cross than Cameron. Cameron. Cameron Grimes, to me, like I said, they, I told you from the beginning, they were they were building him up and grooming him to be oh, okay. gotcha. top, the top heel there. I was talking more about Karrion Cross. His moves looked more believable with with uh, Thick Boy than it did those little tiny stick figures he was doing it to. Like, it, okay. it looked more powerful and it looked like I took it more serious this week than I did those other ones gotcha. the times that he came right. out. So I'm looking forward to that match. Uh, quick cheap plug. We'll be doing our takeover predictions tomorrow. I'll be having TC from the Young Kings Wrestling Podcast and Matt from the Smack and Raw Podcast. Two guests on that. We're going to be predicting the takeover matches. So go ahead and check that out. That should be available Friday morning. So go ahead and check that out, guys. Uh, and But we also had a match announced for TakeOver, a six-woman tag match. Mia Yim, Tegan Knox, Shotzi Blackheart versus Raquel Gonzalez, Dakota Kai, and Candice Array, which was set up with the earlier... Uh, brawl from the yeah. initial match, Candace versus uh, Mia. Uh, I don't, I don't expect it to be anything too crazy, but I know all six women in this match have impressed me, and I like all six of them. I think this match right. is going to be solid, and it's going to be a nice palate cleanser for a takeover because you might need that. I, I don't think this is going to be a standard takeover. It's going to feel more of a like a WWE pay per view esque in terms yeah. of having multiple matches and having some breather stuff in between there. So we'll see. Um, less excited, uh, less excited, yeah. but but it's it, it'll be something decent to be watching while you have a plate of nachos in your hand. I'll tell you the truth this to me exposes the women's division in NXT a little bit. Okay, and it's weaker than it's been in a very long time. I, I think the women's division has been stacked for a really long time, mm-hmm. and I love impact wrestling. Uh, and I think that at this point, I think it, it's not even close. I think Impact Wrestling's women's division is the best in all of wrestling. Uh, NXT gave a real run for its money for a long time, but right now I just don't see a lot of depth. A lot of I like the characters, I like what mm-hmm. they're doing, a lot of storylines over there mm-hmm. in NXT, but I feel like um, they're top heavy. A, but a, yeah, yeah, and AEW is everybody's been, been like saying like, hey, the women's division is the weakest aspect of it. The worst thing NXT could do right now is to flounder in the women's division because that was really like their the one spot. Bread and butter, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think they'll I, they'll circle back to that. I, I think I think they I think for the most part NXT's tag team and women's back. division. It's uh-huh. not about circle it's about talent. The thing is, like you you brought Bianca Belair up for no goddamn good reason. Bianca Belair should be the champion of NXT right now. The women's Facts. Division, Facts. in my opinion. Like, Facts. and I, I, I just feel like, like you brought, you're bringing a lot of people up, uh, and you're keeping a lot of people up, and they're not doing a damn thing. What the? What is? I want to yell. I want to curse right now. But Bianca <laughs> Belair is all she's doing is making uh, the ring gear for her husband. Clothes. That's it. Yeah, and it, it's it's driving me up the damn wall. She should be champion. Instead of Rhea Ripley, I like Rhea Ripley. I think she's got plenty of potential and she's a great talent, but I don't think it's comparable. I think she, I think it's it's beyond. You're, you're preaching to the choir here. That's all us. We both exactly. have that same. We, and, we, we all have that same sentiment, man. And I, uh, I just, we've been saying the same thing. And it's just and, and just right now, like I'm watching, I'm watching Impact, and I see like legitimately three major storylines based on female per- personalities. Mm-hmm. Uh, the at least nine characters 
who I would build companies around, and it just with like. Tessa. And they debuted uh, the last uh, the last tapings they did. Like after their pay per view, they debuted like three girls on that show. Yeah, yeah, so, they uh, they definitely uh, are the the roster that the show the wrestling promotion that focuses heavy on the women's division and allows them to have multiple storylines outside of the the title and makes them feel right. like a big deal and gives some character growth to help build bigger stars. I feel like, but going back to NXT real quickly, and then we'll talk about the main event. Um, I feel like NXT has always gone that with their NXT and tag team division where they go through like a small gap where they have to rebuild the division. Like you saw when Charlotte, Becky and, and Sasha were called up. It was basically Bailey building up Asuka and then Asuka was helping build other people up as well. They were slowly building other people up until like Kyrie Zane, Ember Moon, and Shayna Baszler came around. Now we have more people. It's I think it's gonna be a case Listen where to the talent you just said. Listen, you just said building up Asuka and Kyrie Zane, two established yeah. ass wrestlers in the wrestling world. Like this is not Gonzalez, Rothkel Gonzalez. This is not um this is not Shotzi Blackheart. This is not like Shotzi Blackheart's a good indie talent. Like her, she her ring work has been rough around the edges. You know what I mean? Okay. She, I I don't feel like there's that. You're talking about like Oscar, Kyrie, Zayn, Ember Moon, and then like Shotzi mm-hmm. Blackheart, Dakota Kai. You know what I mean? Tegan Knox. Like I, it's just there's a disparity there. I love okay. all. Of them. There's just yeah. a disparity there now. I yeah, agree. I I think we're just like in the Charlotte Flair NXT Women's Champion era, and once we move past that, we'll see things develop a little bit better. Uh, I do feel like Candice is going to be a big player, like down in, in uh, a couple months, especially once Charlotte's not involved. Uh, hopefully, Io sh- <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. Uh, but uh, that that's a conversation for another day. We could really like unpack and just sit there for hours talking about the state of the women's division in NXT. Cause I love talking about just women's wrestling and NXT's women's wrestlers. And I love about impact. We could sit there and talk for a minute, but I really want to talk about this main event cruiserweight title tournament finals match between El Hijo del Fantasma versus Drake Maverick. But before we do a uh, quick shout out to our sponsor belts by Dan Belts by Dan is a custom championship belt manufacturer and repair restoration and resale company started by the owner of Belts.talk.com. Belts by Dan offers fully custom championship title belts identical to the quality of those used on television by major boxing, MMA, pro wrestling companies. They also offer accessories for owners of existing belts, as well as resale of already completed belts targeted at high-end collectors. So, for instance, like, man, if you like collecting championship belts, you have a a couple of replicas, take it to Belts by Dan. He'll hook you up. Don't let them do you dirty like they did that TNT title. Belts by Dan will be (laughs) right. And let them know that the SmackDown podcast sent you. Sorry for the quick jab to AEW right there, man. But uh, <laughs> let's talk about this main event. Hey, man, I'm sorry. You can't defend that TNT title. I, I, I can't. I, it, it was not completed because of the damn coronavirus. What do you mean I can't defend it? A damn virus. A red strap oh, belt. No. I cannot defend a red strap belt, man. No, that any is, colored man. belt is ass. I'm not. I'm not. I, I am. I'm a fan Mr. of the. Per- hold on. Hold on. Mr. Perfect's yellow Intercontinental Championship would like to have a conversation with you <laughs> and i would like it to sit the fuck down while i talk to the, the white, uh, white IC <laughs> title belt or the black icy title belt that's how i feel about it uh but i'm i'm okay with the purple design of the cruiserweight title and let's talk about that finals match my gosh what a uh, what a main event a lot of emotion from drake maverick i liked how Fantasma came out. His gear looked very heelish, very like the Punisher ass. And he mm-hmm. even worked a little bit more like a heel in this match. Uh, quick question for you and uh, for RN and Donald. Uh, was this match, uh, it, was he only like playing up the heel aspect for the match only, or was it by design? Do you feel like there's there's more to this going, especially given the ending of the match where the Mass Lucha Mafia came out and caused Drake Maverick basically the title. Um, we've been call- we've been talking about this for about three, four weeks now. We are firmly on board with the Luchador Mafia with Phantasm at the he- head of it. Like, and I think that him working heel tonight was the start of it. Like, he came out the gate, fucking spent them around and tried to uh, roll him up to start out the gate. Like, I feel like – I hope this is where we're going. I've been calling it and hoping for this since the beginning. That's what I'm looking forward to is – the Luchador Mafia destroying NXT. 
Uh, Donald, how about you? Do you feel like it was just more or less what Neville playing heel versus Sami Zayn back at TakeOver Respect? and Or was it more or less like intentional and this is a story beat going forward for Phantasma where he's revealed to be the man behind this mass lucha mafia? The beauty of it is it could be both. The beauty yeah. of it is you, the reason you don't know if he's with that group is because it could simply be both. I, I, one of my favorite things I've heard in, in recent interviews was The Rock was talking about Hogan in 2002 and how he knew in the like right away almost in the match. He's like, I know he was Hollywood Hogan, but I was the heel. Like everyone yeah. wanted Hogan to turn face, that racist ass face. But I, he wanted they, at the time we didn't know, and they wanted him to turn. <laughs> and like, okay, let's let's turn him face. And Rock is like, I'm just gonna play the heel. I'm gonna take what the crowd's giving me and I'm going to play the bad guy. And I think that there's no way anyone was going against Drake Maverick in this final and mm -hmm. being the good guy. Facts. So I think you have to embrace the fact that you're going to be the bad guy and just roll with it. And I think that everybody knowing that they're not, they're going to be like, okay, I would, you know, it just is what it is. No one's going to be facing against Maverick. It doesn't necessarily mean he's with, as you say, the Luchador Mafia, um, but I, I think that that's where we should be going. But yeah. the, the fact that there's like a smidge of doubt, like there's just enough doubt to where you're like, there's, hey, we can't convict them in a court of law because there's. <laughs> that, but that, to me, that, to me for NXT, that's why I know that that's what it is because they they're just leaving that little bit of doubt to make you doubt it, to make you look the other way. It's like, nah, that can't be it. When really, that's absolutely fucking it. And that's why I've been calling it and riding with it from the beginning. Because <clears throat> you got to think, every time they've attacked anybody or jumped anybody, they beat the shit out of them. Every time they've gone after Fantasma, it's been some, like, hold me back, like, mm -hmm. grab me, touchy, feely stuff. They've not touched him one time or put their hands on him. He's the head of the mafia. Let's do it. Sometimes, sometimes the best storylines are the simplest storylines. Right. You, you can see it coming from a mile away. Listen, one of my favorite storylines and arguably one of the greatest storylines in all of wrestling history is Macho Man turning on Hulk Hogan. One WrestleMania to the other, eventually turning on his friend, and then they fight each other when the Meg explode. And the thing is, that's a very simple storyline. That was the, the most basic of all the storylines you could have had. And by doing so... You gave the crowd the ability to kind of see in the future and embrace the story. You're like, oh, I see what's happening here. I'm right. going to do it. And I think that's what's happening here. Me too. I, I like it. Uh, the match itself. I, I, I love Fire. it. Because from the get-go, Phantasma was targeting the back of Drake Maverick. And, like, with power bombs and, like, vicious attack to his back, the Boston Crab spot was fantastic, where it looked like Drake Maverick was about to cry afterwards once he got the <laughs> rope break. Uh, Drake Maverick throughout this match would not quit. I loved how once he got him into the corner, like, Drake was so resilient that he, like, just smacked Phantasma, and he got pissed. Like, he, his, he let his fr frustration change the dynamic of the match and make uh, the momentum go towards his fighting Maverick's, spirit. Uh, lo, uh, I'm sorry? His fighting spirit. We saw yeah. his fighting spirit unleashed. His, his fighting spirit was unleashed. And, dude, like, and I'll say this right now because I can speak Spanish. Uh, he was yelling at him in Spanish, like, just quit already. Why won't you quit? And, and I love that whole the whole aspect of it. Um, they go and they, they start brawling in the top rope. They both spill to the floor. Uh, Phantasma hits on the outside and Drake lands inside. That's when the mass mafia comes out. It looks like they were going to be targeting Phantasma. Drake Maverick's like, nope, uh, I'm going to win this match the good way. Similar to John Cena at Money in the Bank 2011. He's like, no, I'm going to do the honorable thing and I'm going like, to like, keep the integrity of the match. He takes them out. But him focusing his attention towards the mass Luchador Mafia basically cost him the match because once he takes them out, he goes back into the ring where Phantasm is waiting with, for him with a super kick, hits him with the Phantom Driver, one, two, three, picks up the win, becomes the new Cruiserweight champion. He's celebrating. He's happy. It's a good moment. And then you just remember, damn, 
that's Drake's career. He's done with WWE. He's gone. The tease of him being Rockstar Spud on Impact Wrestling's Slammiversary, like teaser, like really led people to believe that he might not be going, he might not be staying after all. He might be going to Impact Wrestling. It was very emotional. The crowd is chanting Gringo Loco, which of course in Spanish just means crazy white guy. Uh, rough tra- <laughs> roughly translated, it was crazy white guy. Um, Say that again. I'm sorry. I, said, no, I have never once heard that. And all the all the cities I've been to, I've never once heard anyone call me that. Okay. <laughs> so, so so basically, it's roughly translated to crazy white guy. I was just kidding. I am Gringo Loco. I run that town. Just come on. <laughs> but yeah, so I loved it. I feel like the crowd in general added a lot to this match. I feel yeah. like it wouldn't have been as good if there was it wasn't anyone in the crowd. They it's a good thing that they did this last week because it allowed us to get used to the aspect would, of there being like the performance center trainees there. Because yeah. last week I wasn't feeling it. I don't know if they did something different or I was just expecting it and it worked a they, little bit more. No, they did something different. They lined they lit up the crowd a little bit more and you could actually hear they either turned up the, the audience's uh, audio or whatever, but it was it's they clearly did something different. Like I said, you could actually see people's faces. You could see what shirts they had on. Last week, it was literally just shadows in the damn crowd. Like so, they yeah. definitely did something different this week for sure. And, and then, they and shouldn't. It, have, they always like are slow to the game on stealing shit, but they steal shit from other promotions all the time. This should have been the first thing they stole from WW from AEW. They should have had the recruits wrestling, out there. Nothing, nothing in wrestling is original. Everything. That's not. Is, that's not what I'm saying. I and I, no, I no, agree no. with that. No, no, that and that's no, that's that's ex- that's exactly what I'm saying. Nothing is original. They should have fucking did it to begin with out the gate instead of waiting what two months in before they finally started doing it. <laughs> I, I'm a, I'm agreeing with you. That I'm I'm just leading to the point saying nothing yeah. in wrestling is original. Everything is stolen from somewhere. Everything is a copycat from something. That's why I I always felt like they should have done it. Yeah. And it was more or less. I guess they wanted to do the pex, uh, pexi glass or whatever. They wanted to do something different. Just wanted to like. Make sure. I, I don't. I, I don't know what the reason was for it. Eventually, I'm glad they did make the change. It, it's really, really good. I think it works more better on Raw and SmackDown because you see an NX, actual NXT TV talent on there, and it's more of a where's Wildo situation. And I'm happy yeah. seeing like a Shotzi Blackheart or, Mike, yeah. or a Malcolm Bivens react to something that Seth Rollins does. So I think it adds more to Raw and SmackDown than it does to NXT because some of these people we just don't know just yet because they haven't debuted. Yeah. But uh, post match. Uh, uh, Drake Mavericks all bummed out. He he gave it his all, but he couldn't couldn't get the title. Triple H comes out with a contract similar to like what he did with Cedric after the Cruiserweight exactly. t- uh, tournament. I love that he's like and he tells him he didn't say says it on on the mic, but the camera picks it up. It's like you've earned this and gives him the NXT contract. It was a great moment. Work. And- so okay, okay. So I don't think it started off as a work. I think it was legit. Just Drake Maverick impressing everyone so well with his like uh, video message that he gave, and then yeah. his work in the ring, his own promos. I'm pretty sure everything he shot that was his own stuff, or he was heavily influential in the stuff that he was involved with, his video packaging and all his promos. He, he just showed that he was a Swiss Army knife. That whether he's a manager uh, for for a wrestler, whether he's a general manager for a show and authority figure, whether he's someone just helping backstage or a great in ring talent, this guy can knock it out of park. Whatever you give him, and I think they just realized we have to give this guy a contract. We have to include it in him. And now you have the story where you can reveal they, uh, that Fantasma basically co- cost uh, Drake Maverick the match and almost his career with WWE. And now you have a heated feud going into the next takeover where you have a pissed off Drake Maverick trying to get redemption and get that title back. And here's the thing. You still have Jordan Devlin on the other side of the pond mm-hmm. waiting for things to get back to normal and claim it make his rifle claim as the rifle cruiserweight champion i love it they're making this cruiserweight title feel important and special something that I, they haven't done since its inception the only last the last time i felt this invested with the cruiserweight title was when neville was champion that's because he was dominant mm-hmm. well uh, real quick though enzo with, with naya and drew yeah. really want to see where that was going i genuinely yep. 
he nope. got he cut a little bit too quick, but I was I wanted to see them scoot around a little bit. Uh, I think that the this is very much Cedric. This is Triple H trying to capture that lightning in a bottle a second time. With Cedric, it was so natural, and everybody was like, "This is it." I truly feel like Drake Maverick posted that video of himself emotional after getting fired, just like Heath Slater did, just like mm-hmm. other people did. I feel like what WWE did from a public relations – again, I, I work in I work in travel media, so I see a lot of public relations people. I think they realized that cutting a bunch of people's jobs looks <laughs> terrible, right? Yeah. So they found the guy who got the most sympathy, which was Drake, because of that video he did, which was incredible. And they said, what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to bring you back to kind of save face a little bit with a lot mm-hmm. of the decisions we made. And I feel like we all knew, you know what I mean, that he's good in the ring, that he's good on the mic, that he's a good character. He, he is a Swiss Army knife. It's a great way of saying it. But I feel like uh, it, WWE didn't really realize that. No, and they didn't. And go, and then everybody's like, you effed up. And they're like, well, did we? And they, then they say face, and then that's how we Yeah, I, th- so what- I think what happened was – he was just fortunate to be announced for that cruiserweight tournament a week in advance before mm-hmm. the lay- layoffs. And they had, well, I guess it was the thing where they told him like, Hey, do you still want to compete in this tournament? Or they asked him, Hey, can you still do the three matches? I think what was supposed to happen is that he was supposed to lose his final match. And it was supposed to be Kushida versus Phantasma. And it's the same story they're trying to tell with Drake Maverick, but they, like you said, captured lightning in the bottle and they decided, mm-hmm. you know what? Because he wasn't given the opportunity to showcase what he'd do in ring. From the get-go, he was just either AOP's manager. Pants, dude. Yeah. He pissed his pants on freaking national yeah. television. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And that's how much of a company guy, that's how much of a team player this guy is. Anything you throw at him, he'll be like, okay, I feel like I can make that work. I'll make it work. If anybody can make mm-hmm. it work, I can. I'm happy for him. And here's the thing. Both, like you were saying, both men were made into the stars. You have Phantasma, especially if they go the heel route with him. Now he's going to have the biggest heel heat in the company, given that he almost cost this man's livelihood by having him lose that that tournament match. He did because no one knew that Triple H was going to come out and offer Drake that that contract. We had no way of like within the K- confines of kayfabe. We had no yeah. idea of it happening within you kayfabe. Knew. We all knew. I yeah. did. I, as honestly, soon as he went to the final. There's no way you're putting. Here's the truth. I think that WWE is smart in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. And if you remember correctly, when we watched the original Cruiserweight Classic, uh, it was supposed to be Zack Sabre Jr. versus Kota Ibushi. Yeah. yeah. Neither of those guys were going to sign. So they're like, F that. Why are we going to put him in a position to succeed if right. they're just going to walk away at the end? Mm-hmm. So they made them both lose. Uh, me fair personally, fair I, fair I, saw, I thought he was going to get a contract no matter what. I actually had started to think he was going to win this damn thing until the Luchador Mafia shit started getting involved. And that's when we've been calling from the beginning. Whoever he went against, they were going to cost that person a match and Phantasm was going to win. Uh, I, mean, that since the beginning. I was more or less under the impression that he wasn't going to win the tournament, but he was one of the people furloughed. So he was going to be brought back after this whole yeah. thing. And then they made the whole story where like the returning Drake Maverick gets his revenge. Uh, on uh, on Phantasma, but I like the way they went. I don't think it was the plan. I think they just changed course, and I love mm-hmm. it when wrestling is able to do that because you can't predict your audience. You can't predict what they will and will not like, and you can't just try to force something. Yes, you have to tell the story you're trying to tell, but all, you also have to listen to your audience and, right. uh, and listen to what they're telling you. I'm a boxing guy, okay? I kickboxed, I, I wrestled, I, I boxed my life. Mayweather is not an offensive fighter. Mm-hmm. Mayweather is a defensive fighter. He takes what you give him mm-hmm. and he gives it back to you. And I think in wrestling, it's very similar to that. I think that some of the best things that we get in wrestling, one of the best episodes of SmackDown ever was the one where they had their plane like hijacked in Saudi Arabia. So like, let's just have NXT invade SmackDown. Yeah. That was completely and utterly unplanned. And they bring in just all these talents. And I think that when you get something outside that wheels, that comfort zone, outside the wheelhouse, you can truly produce something incredible. And you can right. cast life in a bottle. And it's organic. That's the word I like to use. Organic. WWE, yeah. it's organic talent getting over. When Cesaro got over, they punished him. When uh, Damian Sandow got over, they punished him. Instead yeah. of punishing these people, Rusev, 
give them the opportunity like they did Drake Maverick. Gotcha. I uh, totally agree, man. But, man, I, I love the way they handle things. I'm mm-hmm. super happy for Drake Maverick. I uh, can't wait to see what they do next week. Uh, but uh, we're going to wrap up the show. We've, we, we've covered just about everything. Uh, I just want to say thank you, Donald, for even being on the show. We appreciate your insight and your 10 years of covering wrestling. Like, it has been very helpful. Totally different opinion on a lot of things, and that's what I like. I like to have different opinions on the show, different views, and help us see the other pictures that normally we just wouldn't see. And, and I like that. Uh, quickly, before we sign off, uh, where can people find you again? The streets. <laughs> uh, do you want to plug any of your social medias? Nope. Go ahead. Just it's. I'm Donald Wood. If you don't know where I'm at, you'll find me soon enough. I'll be. I'll be on all the headlines of the newspapers. For sure. Uh, Ring Rust Radio. Check them out if you have a lot of time on your hands. Uh, or and they can they can find them obviously at Mister Eighty Nine Eighty Four. Mean Jelly Beans memes on Facebook. Mean Jelly Bean Productions on YouTube. Obviously, you can find us on Twitter at Smackrock Pod. Find me at SES Vince. Go ahead and hit that download if you enjoyed this episode. Give it a subscribe on YouTube. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Turn on the bell notifications, all that good stuff. You know, all the random shit you try to plug on, on the podcast. Uh, this has been the NXT Podcast. Thank you guys for joining us. We will be having our takeover predictions Friday morning and obviously the post show uh, Sunday night. So go ahead and look out for that. We'll catch you guys next week. Later, y'all. Have a good one. <laughs>